Hello. Today, we're going to talk about if statements. Let's go. Any of you with previous coding experience will know that an if statement will usually look something like this. And the way it's used is as follows. The contents inside the parentheses are tested against something else. And if the result of the test is true, then the commands within the curly brackets are executed. If the results of the test are false, then the commands are ignored and the program continues on its merry way. So as an example of this, every time the program is run, we could ask it to produce a random number, say between zero and two, and then store it in a variable called x. And then if inside the parentheses, we type our test condition, x equals one, every time we run the program, we would ask the question, does our random number x equal one? If it does, the answer is true, and the commands in the curly brackets will be executed. But if it's equal to zero or two, i.e. false, the commands in the curly brackets will be ignored. And in Teletype, things are pretty similar. Except in Teletype land, we don't have true or false. Instead, we have zero and not zero. So in the case of Teletype's if statement, if the value at position x is not zero, then the commands after the colon are executed. If they do equal zero, then the command after the colon is ignored and the next line of code in the script is read. With Teletype, the LIF op refers to what is known in general coding as else if. The purpose of else if is to add another case to an if statement. Put simply, else if allows you to carry out an additional test if the result of the first test comes up false. So similarly to the if op, for the teletype, else if looks like this, where x is the condition to be tested, followed by a colon, and then the command to be executed if the result of the test is not zero. But what if all our previous tests from our if and else if statements come back false? Well, ordinarily, in both cases, the script would continue on until it reached its end. But you may want to perform the tests and then have an extra case at the end that will run a command if all else fails. And this is why we have the else op. The structure of else is similar to the if and elif, with the main difference being that there is no condition to test. Instead, we type else, colon, and then the command to be executed. So looking at the patch notes for this example, we can see that we have two clocks coming in from PAMS, one of which is a times one clock to trigger script one of Teletype, and the other is a divide by eight clock to trigger a random seed command on script three. Trigger outs one to four of Teletype connect to triggers in one to four of Just Friends. And each of these triggers on Just Friends fires a separate envelope for four oscillators, all tuned to different pitches. So first off, we're gonna start in script one, and we're going to use a local variable j. And I'm going to introduce something new, which is the op toss. And all toss does is, as the name suggests, it's like a coin toss. So it's just a 50-50 chance of something happening. So in the case of toss, we either get a zero or a one. And then we're gonna use our first if statement. So we type if, and then we're gonna use our variable j, followed by a colon, and we're gonna say if j equals one, we want to run script two. And this is something else new that we haven't used before. The dollar sign allows us to trigger other scripts from a script. It can also be written script if we want, but our alias is the dollar sign. So every time j is one, Script two will be triggered. So if we go over to script two, the first thing I want to do is to define another variable. In this case, it's gonna be a global variable. So I'm gonna use X and in X, I want to place a random number within a range of one to four. And then I'm gonna use another if statement. And within this if statement, we're gonna do a little bit of maths. And the maths we're gonna use is an equal to op, which is written EQ. I'm going to say if x is equal to 1, then fire 
trigger output one. I'm going to do the same thing again, but this time I'm going to use an elif statement. And I'm going to say if x is equal to 2, run trigger output 2. And then the same again, this time I'm just going to copy and paste. I'm going to change x to 3 and trigger output 3. So what this is doing is taking the random number Placing it in x, if x equals 1, it's going to trigger output 1, 2, output 2, 3, output 3. But what if it's 4? Well, in that case, we use the else statement. And I'm going to say, if all of the other cases fail, we're just going to run trigger output 4. And then our last piece of script is going to be in script 3. And as I said before, we're just going to do a random seed. So we have a repeatable sequence. And let's go 665. So if I run the sequence now, what you'll hear is that sometimes our triggers will fire, sometimes they won't. And they're randomly firing 1 to 4 currently. And we could extend this idea into the script 3 and what we could add to this is another if statement and if you remember x is a global variable so in this case we could say if x is equal to 1 we could set a random random seed and we could choose which one we're going to use between two different seeds Now you can hear the sequence is changing. So try to keep in mind that if statements can be used for all sorts of different things, not just triggers. Things like sending different levels of CV if certain conditions are met within your scripts. It could be used to trigger other scripts when certain things happen elsewhere in your program. Also, an if statement could decide what speed a clock is running. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks again for tuning in, folks. See you next time. Cheers.